Alright. Hey guys, I'm trying to do something a little off what I normally do. I'm going to actually kind of do some little commentary on my trip to Duna and Carbo Space Program. Uh, first, I'll take to just kind of show you the ship that I used. At this point, I've already gone and realized I probably should have recorded me saying what the heck I'm doing first. Um, this ship is fairly small for an interplanetary ship as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm taking a few things with me, mech jab and docking and other but other otherwise the ship is pretty small because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into orbit and refuel. It's just got four rocket boosters, a main sail, and then there's no engine underneath here, it just separates and then the these engines do the circularization and the orbiting. Uh, I got some RCS fuel and some RCS for maneuvering and for docking at the space station. Mechjeb, just in case I need it, mostly for planetary information, but I don't actually use it during the flight except for that. And then I got a single little Mark 1 pod right there with a docking port kind of oversized on the top and the parachutes on there, etc. Rechargeable batteries, and I've got solar panels on the sides. That's pretty much it for that. And so I the rest of the video I pretty much go straight to launch and uh, you'll see me take off and go from there. So here we are at the launch pad. It's going at about two, two and a half times speed right now. I've sped up most of the video because I know you don't want to watch an all hour and a half of me trying and failing at Kerbal Space Program. I've kind of slowed down the launch a little bit from the rest of the video just so you can kind of see some of the basic mechanics of it. I do encourage you to play this game, it's really fun, but my videos should never probably be used as a tutorial for anything. Um, Scott Manley is probably the best bet for almost anything you could ever want to do in this program. But I kind of slow it down so you can see the basics of some of the launch here. You kind of keep your speed below 150, 200 meters per second before you hit 10,000 feet. Uh, and then you start doing your turn right at about 10,000 and up your throttle. Uh, you stay below 200 meters per second below 10,000 just so you don't waste a lot of fuel fighting the air. Uh, you really don't want to break the speed of sound. That's pretty much what you're really trying to avoid. But uh, like really, just going too fast just wastes a lot of fuel. But once you get past about 10,000, the atmosphere is thin enough so you can do it. And then you just angle over after 10,000 feet. About 45 degrees will get you the whole way if you've got a good ship. And you take your orbit out to as far as you want to go. And then you can use maneuver nodes to kind of tell you how to do your burns after that. So here I just am setting up to go into the turn to do the burn. It's a fairly short burn. Four times speed now. I cut loose the bottom station because now at this point it's dead weight even if I did transfer fuel to it. The atomic engines there are very efficient and Although they have a lower thrust to weight ratio, should be able to get the job done for the rest of the mission. Like I said before, I'm not trying to go to Duna right away. I have nowhere near enough fuel on the ship, as you notice, uh, in the top right on the resource panel. What I'm trying to do is rendezvous with my space station that's in orbit. You can see it's kind of already at a certain orbit there, and I'm trying to use a maneuver node to meet it but I didn't have any luck on the first one there, and now I'm getting one that's got me a pretty good encounter. So I'm just going to time warp up to the maneuver node burn point. I'll slow down and then do a quick burn. This just sounds weird. Kind of do a little fine tuning burn, and then I'm going to time accelerate up to the rendezvous with the space station. At this point, I'm getting close enough so that the target mode has come up on the bottom, and I can use the maneuvering ball to kind of guide what I'm doing. I'm changing my velocity with respect to the target so that I fly in a line that's more directly towards it. You see my prograde vector is lined up with the pink target node on the bottom ball, and now I'm flying straight towards the target. Time accelerate, and I'm going to do a bit, make a one more time acceleration, and I actually go a little bit too fast, so I'm going to fly past it. That's why I turn around very quickly and start burning the other way. 
And then I pretty much fly past it again, but actually on the right side that time. So I get turned around, getting ready to slow myself down again. And I open the solar panels so I can keep using my telemetry, telemetry data from NECJEB. So here I go. I want to dock on the top of the station because the bottom has all the fuel ports in the way. There are docking ports down there, but it's just kind of crazy to get to them. I have one on the end of the station that's not being used right now, so I'll take advantage of that. I think I switched into docking mode momentarily here. Yep, there it goes. And then I use the RCS thrusters to push me in very slowly. I control the docking nodes, do the control from here, and then select the docking node I want to dock on. And then I just kind of ease myself in. It's a slow process docking, uh, even sped up, you know, four or five times. It just takes a long time to do it right. This is you have to do it very precise if you don't want to shake the whole station. And then I transfer in about a third of uh, a tank from each fuel container because I want to keep the balance on the station right. Keep the symmetry of it up. Then I undock. Uh, you notice I only fueled the main center tank, not the two smaller tanks on the uh, on the nuclear engines themselves. Right here, I'm, I'm kind of showing the angles, the phase angles that I need to escape Kerbin from. That's the ejection angle on the right, and the actual phase angle on the left, where You'll kind of see what this is when you go back to the solar system. But it also, I'm using MechJeb to show me what the phase angles are there. And I'm at 25 degrees and it needs to be at 45. Which basically means I need to wait a whole nother year for the planet to come all the way around. So I put a ship on the launch pad so I can simulate really fast and run through <laughs> lots of time. And I see how slowly it's counting down. So I don't really want to watch this seizure inducing... Uh, mode for a while but you see the planet the red planet there is Duna that I'm trying to get in the right angle for the fuel saving burn the the transfer pattern and you just have to wait for it to go all the way around basically Kerbin's going to catch up because its orbit's going a little bit quicker by Kepler's law and that's pretty much the point of this At w as soon as I get to the correct angle, which is what, 44 degrees or so? The uh, I'm going to slow down and then try and set my departure point with a maneuver node. So here I am. Get back to the uh, interplanetary vessel. It's just actually floated quite a ways away from the space station in about a year's time. And then set myself up to burn at the hopefully appropriate ejection angle. I think I screwed this up a little bit. That's why I wasn't able to get to Duna on my first run. You see me messing with the uh, maneuver node system here. I mess with this for a very long time before I get it right. So I've cut somewhere in here on the video. And it'll just kind of skip to a point where I actually have an encounter. The first time around, I just... <laughs> it took forever and got really nowhere. This is my, this is my first interplanetary transfer ever. And there I screwed up the maneuver node, so I have to redo it. At this point, I actually select Duna so we can see how clo how far away I am. And so you see my encounter on the left, I'm not actually encountering it. My closest approach is quite far away. So I really just try screwing around this maneuver node trying to get anywhere that will get me a successful encounter. But I pretty much realize it's not going to happen, so I should burn anyway. And then do a corrective action maneuver, like a corrective maneuver once I'm already away from the planet Kerbin. So you're going to see my first burn here. Uh, and something silly happens. I forget to transfer fuel from the main tank 
to the uh, side tanks. And I also forgot to put fuel line from the main tank to the side tanks. So what you're going to see is that they're running low on fuel, and I have to do a transfer mid-burn in order to make the maneuver. And I'm just kind of like, what do I do at this point? <laughs> I've slowed it down here so you can see like my thought process go in action, but uh, <laughs> I just kind of sit there and then all right, I'll try a transfer, and then, you, and then it burns out, and then at the, just the wrong absolute moment, it just starts spinning out of control, and then the engine just poops off. It just flies away. <laughs> I think I started laughing at that point, but uh, I just figured like, what the heck? Why don't I try it with the other one? See what happens. And then I transfer uh, the fuel into the other engine. And pretty much the same thing happens, just in reverse. So pretty much very fail first planetary transfer maneuver. And I uh, have a quick save loaded, and I just bring myself back to uh, the burn point, just because <laughs> that was so silly. <sighs> and so I, again, forget to transfer the fuel. Um, but I remember a little bit earlier this time, so I transferred before they went out. thing I do do is I actually transfer too much fuel into one instead of uh, trying to balance it out and so the center of mass shifts so much I'm blown off course as so you can see there I kind of really have to fight to get back on course well before I can balance out the fuel transfer and get my center of mass back correctly. And then at this point the burn is pretty un uneventful so I think everything's back at full speed by now. This is still four times speed, so. Imagine what I had to sit through. Actually, I think I may have gone away and gone to snack at some point. I know I did that for one of these burns. These burns just take a long time to do. And I've edited out some of the later burns, just because all the ER is burning. You don't have to sit here for an hour. So I've done my first burn, then I uh, get smart and start transferring fuel in before I do the next one. Of course, if I were smartest, I would have just put fuel transfer lines on there to do it automatically, but okay. <laughs> and then I start messing around doing corrective maneuvers, and I realize I do not have enough delta V to get there on this pass. I would have to burn like 2,000 meters per second to actually do it, so I realize I'm going to have to go all the way around the sun basically a whole nother year in space just to get a corrective burn opportunity that will actually get me an encounter as you can see in the bottom left I actually have an encounter <sighs> so I set up that burn and then I just go around the sun you can see here I'm looking actually looking for Duna since I'm coming up close to it I'm trying to see if I can see it just being kind of close to it but I don't I'm not able to here again, I look for it again, but it's just not there. It's too far away. Then I get ready for the next burn. It's another kind of long burn. So while I'm here, I kind of look at some of the telemetry data and make some course adjustments along the way, get a nice close-up of everything on the spaceship. I also uh, do a rotation so my solar panels can get a better view of the sun. And you guys have a nice view of the space spaceship itself, and you see the heat coming, glowing off the nuclear engine. The radiation. Another one more corrective burn just to see if I can get them a little closer to Duna. I orient myself. And to make the burn.
burn, and then I go all the way around. So I cut that out. It took a long time to make it. Then I get close to Duna for the first time, and I start slowing down just so I can get a view of it as it comes up. I really wanted to see it as I was flying up to it. And I get a little over anxious in doing so. So what you're going to see, actually, is like it's going to come up. Here, come on. Go in the middle. Okay, there it is. Start seeing it. Take a picture. And then I go back. Time warp. Rip, right past it. <laughs> I missed it. I missed it completely. I'm like, oh god. And I try seeing what would happen if I tried retrograde burn. I know it would be, take way too much to get captured again. So I'm like, oh. Screw that. And I come all the way around again. <laughs> Wasted all that time. I left some of these fails in here so you can see just the stupid stuff that happens. That actually happens while playing this game all the time. I almost wish they had a million times speed or maybe a 500,000 times because even 100,000 times is kind of slow at these scales when you're taking whole years to get places. And this time I don't screw up. I set up my maneuver to, to burn, to kind of get in a little orbit around the planet. And it's a really long, long burn. I know I've cut this one up a little bit in the video editing. Let's see how it goes. Ah, yes, enough photo off, of course. Those little s camera shots you hear are me taking steam photographs. Steam, steam, screams, yeah, screenshots. And then I think we have like a five minute burn, and then I go get a snack. But I've cut that out. Or at least most of it. Oh yeah, one thing I was doing is I had for the first minute or so I had to transfer in fuel because it was such a long burn. I would have run out of fuel in the small tanks, but here we are, uh, getting ready to get closer to Duna. So I'm in the first orbit, and I'm going to set up a new maneuver node to get really close to the planet. This maneuver will take me kind of behind the planet, and then behind the planet I'll set up another maneuver node at my uh, periaps. You always want to do your maneuver nodes at your periaps or apoaps if you can, because they save fuel and they're actually more effective in the long run in terms of changing your positioning and your control of it. Set up one more maneuver node that'll put me down into the atmosphere. One thing I didn't realize uh, when I first started the mission, <laughs> or even when I got to almost this point, was how big uh, Duna's atmosphere is. Uh, I actually cannot leave Duna because of the atmosphere. Not just because it's big, but because of the atmosphere. I probably could have landed on Ike, Duna's moon there. If without really much problem and come home. But Duna's atmosphere is quite foreboding. So here I go. I'm on my first sunrise on Duna, technically. And I start slowing down to do the atmospheric entry. And one thing I do is deploy the parachutes, because I, when I realized there was an atmosphere, I'm like, oh, the parachutes can help slow me down. I don't need to just do a rocket, you know, landing like you might do on the moon, or on uh, Midmus, or any other little moon. But then I thought, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't deploy the parachutes. So what you're going to see is here, after I deploy them, I'm like, uh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. And what I actually do, I get out of the capsule and try to pack them up again. Because you have to be outside the capsule to actually pack up your parachutes. And then I realize I think you have to either be in orbit or stopped on the ground. But you can't be stuck in atmosphere while trying to deploy parachutes. I mean, or to pack up your parachutes. So I get back in the ship and start trying to slow myself down. Because I realize, oh god, these parachutes are not going to deploy until I'm below like 10,000 meters. And even if they did, they wouldn't be that effective. That was just me checking if uh, I had accidentally destroyed anything. There they go, there are the parachutes. So now you see I'm doing a burn to slow myself down. And I actually do it really well the first time, my first try on this landing, which 
you can see, after several crashes, his uh, <laughs> I keep forgetting to burn long enough. Or not forgetting so much as I don't need to burn. I just think I don't need to. Those parachutes should, I figure, have done more, but they really don't do much until you're like here at 500 meters above the ground. Which they do slow you down a lot. First landing was moderately successful until then, and I just crashed. slowed it down so you could see the glory of the explosion. So I reset it, go back in the atmosphere. This is already a, after I VBA trying to fix the parachutes, so the parachutes are coming out no matter what. One thing you'll notice is that I lose the solar panels, they just kind of fly off, but that's not going to stop me. But that might. <laughs> I was, I didn't start my burn early enough and the parachutes deployed and the force tore my craft in half. So I'm like, all right, I've got to burn a little more than that. So I think, all right, I think I've slowed myself down enough. I don't need to burn anymore. But you know, lo and behold, I lose, I lose the solar panels again, and I'm like, eh, that's probably not a good idea. I'm gonna need those to power <laughs> my chest. So I do it again. Put the solar panels away. Start burning. Don't burn enough again. So when the parachutes eventually deploy, I am pretty much just fly in half again. I go through so many attempts just to kind of go like this. And wait, here he goes, here he goes. <laughs> put the parachutes away, I mean put the solar panels away. Fly down again. Can't remember what went wrong this time. I think I finally figured out that I should be burning a little earlier. Yeah. This is still not enough. I'm still not burning early enough. So, I start burning a little earlier this time. enough. It, it actually works. My craft doesn't fly into two pieces. Now here I slow it down so you can see what happens now. Uh, it goes horribly wrong again, <laughs> but you'll see why in a moment. This is actual speed. So it seems really slow. It's like nothing can really screw this up. I don't even see it anymore, truly. This is what it looks like, how slow it's going. side of the cliff, and I just kind of turn over and die. And it's a glorious crash, and everybody's happy to see explosions. And finally, one last go. I figure it all out. Uh, finally. I decide to burn a lot earlier and land in the crater since I figured the ground's flatter. So here you do. I do my actual nice burns, slow myself down quite a lot. And here I bring down the speed so we can watch the successful landing. Kind of keep myself locked in a certain orientation, just to keep the burn lateral, to slow my lateral velocity and keep it all vertical velocity. As much as I can. So then I start falling down towards the ground. Realize landing struts are a good idea. Trying to keep myself straight and 
instead of a swamp type thing. One last word and touch down and it doesn't fall over. Glorious. I have successfully safely made it to do that after many, many, many attempts. I don't have a ladder, but I pretty much figured I wouldn't need one with Duna's gravity being what it is, and I was right. It's kind of heavy, but um, I do a quick check to make sure I can fly, and yes I can, even if it's slowly. So I can fly back up to the capsule. So then I kind of pose for a few photo ops uh, after maybe two or three years in space total. It's good to get out of there. And that's it. That's pretty much the video. I get back in the capsule and sign off for now. Thank you for watching, if you did.